Traveling. Malta. Malta is a little country south of Italy that is mainly made up of three islands. Malta, Gozo and Camino. I travel to the big one, Malta, to its capital, Valletta. I'll always remember Malta for its landscapes, good food and the gorgeous crystal clear water of its beaches and caves. The very best places I visited were Blue Grotto, Azur Window and finally Blue Lagoon. We visited the Blue Grotto via a little boat which let us move around the cave, sneak closer to the amazing neighboring cliffs and due to the sun's reflection off the water, at times the cave is well lit meaning you can see right through the turquoise water to the sea floor, giving light to the wonders below it, including coral reefs and the abundant marine life. At other times, it can be a little bit spooky floating through the cave's tunnels and crevices in near darkness. Even more spectacular is the light show every morning. The sun hits the water and bounces off, reflecting many different shades of blue quite a unique sight. There are a few people scuba diving and rock climbing. The views are simply stunning. Azur Window is on the island of Gozo. You must have seen it in many films or TV shows, such as The Count of Monte Cristo and Game of Thrones. It's a really famous landmark and we took a ferry to get there. It, it just looks like a big hole in the middle of a cliff and underneath lies a big lagoon where swimming and diving is prevalent. Despite the somewhat long journey taking us roughly two and a half hours, it was more than worth it. It's another gorgeous sight and something that should be experienced soon as the top of the arc is disintegrating at a rapid rate. People say the arc will have completely eroded within just a few years. Again, you can see plenty of people scuba diving and swimming in the waters around the arc. If you fancy it, although it isn't recommended, you can jump off the cliff. I wouldn't dare though. Blue Lagoon is a natural lagoon found between the island of Camino and a few other smaller islands. Don't get me wrong, it was stunningly beautiful. The, the water is astonishingly blue, but there were too many people there. You could only really sit on the rocks and when we wanted to have a swim, we had a bit of a dilemma. Either jump off the rocks into the water or attempt to cross the sunbathers and their towels. We ended up crossing and stepping on the towels because I just didn't dare jump off the rocks and neither did my partner. Just seeing it though is really something else. The capital Valletta is also really pretty with mostly Baroque architecture. There's the Grand Harbour which nowadays is just a tourist harbour but, but was rather important throughout the Second World War and indeed the whole area sustained huge damage during Nazi and fascist air raids. Malta received the George Cross on a collective basis in 1942 after a two year long siege by King George VI himself for the outstanding bravery of the Maltese people in order to bear witness to the heroism and devotion that will long be famous in history. The cross still appears to date on the flag of Malta, on the top left hand side. There are rather a few churches owing to the different cultures that coexist in the country. The food's pretty good too. I had some penny pasta with an Alfredo sauce, you know, cream, garlic and parmesan, and this time with some added bacon. God, it was delightful. Another standout meal was some slow-cooked rabbit. It might be a bit debatable what I'm about to say, but frankly, I think I ate better in Malta than in Italy. I must have gone to the wrong restaurants in Italy or something. Malta was really nice and has plenty to offer, from the stunning views to rock climbing, scuba and cliff diving. Some of the places were a bit crowded and in hindsight it might have been much nicer during the off-peak months.